Today, I'd like to come full circle on a project. Let me paint you a pretty little picture. Imagine this. It's 1995. I'm in high school. I'm friendless. Maybe because I dress like this? But probably not. It's probably because I have a pretty strong personality. I am dating my husband which is a lifesaver. It would be so lonely if I hadn't have met him in high school. I am super interested in historical fashion, but I don't know how to articulate or explore that concept fully. My household just invested in the internet, but I didn't know how to use it. It was pretty wonky and it sounded like this. My only connection to my fashion interests were through a couple of magazines. I did like modern fashion and I loved runway shows and just out there fabrications. So I used to read Vogue all the time. But then when it came to my more historical costuming interests, I really only had one thing that kind of connected me to this world. It was a magazine called Victorian Trading Company. And I don't know how I found out about it, but once I did, it was a bit of a game changer for me. I did frequent Joanne Fabrics and I had a couple patterns that really interested me, predominantly these. And then I think I got the rest of my historical patterns from Victorian Trading Company. In the back of the magazine, there was almost this want ads and advertisement section. And I found a few places to be able to order patterns through there. I'm pretty sure that's where I got these couple of patterns. So here we go. My pattern stash is incredibly limited. I was just learning how to sew since I literally didn't know anybody else on earth who had interest in these types of garment design. Movies were the only place that I could go to and escape to where I felt like my curiosities were being indulged. So I would honestly watch movies over and over and over again. They more became kind of friends than films. And I would utilize the feelings and the tones and the inspirations to try to create wardrobes for myself. I did feel kind of like I was very much in the dark. And nowadays, you know, it's just a quick Google search and you can find other people doing these types of things. You can meet up with people. There's entire events surrounding it. So the garment today that I am going to sew is one of the first things that I made back in high school. Unfortunately, I can't find this chemise. I actually don't really have many things from my childhood that I've sewn, so I want to go ahead and try to recreate this chemise. I do remember enjoying it a lot and hopefully I will be a little better now than I was then so I can kind of fine tune it. And yeah, I'm just really excited to get my hands on this chemise. So let's go. Okay, wait, wait, before we begin, it's raining outside and it's springtime and it's so beautiful. So I ran outside, got a little bit wet, but I want to show you a couple things that are blooming in the yard and you can listen to the rain and listen to the birds. It's, it's magical. And then we'll begin.
I am having so much fun making this chemise, it's unreal. I had no idea that just three simple pattern pieces could create such a beautiful, delicate design. And I'm messing up a lot, but something about the quality of this fabric, it's like butter. I, it's seriously beautiful to work with. You can cut into it, it's forgiving, you can mold it. Uh, I definitely struggled with this part of the chemise right here. I don't even know what you call it. The neck lining, I made mine kind of crooked and uneven. What's challenging about this fabric is that it is so delicate and so gauzy and it's almost that it kind of moves away from the scissors and the stitching as you try to pin things down. But it's okay because you can just say, come here little fabric and you just kind of pull on it. And it has this forgiveness and this gentle quality to it. And you can kind of shape it into the garment that you want. And anything that I've messed up, I've just kind of been able to correct through a little bit of coercion and hand stitching. And honestly, because the fabric is so beautiful and seems so authentic, the mistakes don't bother me at all. They're almost endearing. It does seem like a very old handmade garment, which is exactly what I want. So I've just been getting into the spirit of this whole recapturing my youth here. I am wearing the only garment that I have that I made that still survives to this day. Every other garment, including the chemise that I'm trying to remake, has been donated, given away, lost, worn to death. So this is the only thing that I have that I made from that time period. And what's kind of unique about this is it's the only pattern that I ever just made up on the spot. There was no preparation, no planning. I think I probably saw a movie, was inspired by something and said, I'm gonna make something like that. And I just made this as I went along. I didn't cut out any pattern pieces. I didn't draft. I didn't know how to do those things back in the mid 90s. And this is also the first time I've ever embroidered anything as well. And the last time. I haven't really done much embroidery. I do want to get into that, but that's a project for another time. I think I only wore it a couple times in high school. And then I did wear it when I was pregnant with my first daughter. I'm going to see if I can find a picture of that because, you know, it's convenient. It allows the belly to really breathe. But yeah, overall, the project came together so much quicker than I anticipated. It went by so quickly, I basically forgot to film anything. I did a few stitches and wow, I have a chemise. I definitely didn't do the front the way you were supposed to. I don't think that I attached this what were we calling it? Collar piece? I, I don't remember what it is, but I don't think I attached that correctly. I definitely didn't put the sleeves on correctly, but the results are just magical. I am so thrilled with this chemise. Oh, another thing that I've been doing is I have been getting all of my old CDs that I was listening to at that time. I mean, I listened to so many more than this, but this just kind of encapsulates the time period for me. We have the breeders, and these are legit from that time. And a whole, I mean, it's just amazing. I love this stuff. I'm such a 90s kid. Uh, Smashing Pumpkins, this was more my husband's favorite album, and we listened to it all the time when we were making out in his basement. And Nirvana was my favorite. But anyway, I'm really excited to show you the reveal. I hope that you like this project as much as I have, and I can't wait for you to see.
I could not be more in love with this garment and this entire process has just felt like a romance for me. I know that sounds really dramatic, but I don't buy or make or wear clothing to cover my body. I mean, I do, but it's more than that to me. I am trying to evoke a feeling or capture a moment or express a concept. And I feel like a lot of times when I gravitate towards outfits, it's always because I'm picturing what I would be doing while I'm wearing them. And I'm sure that, you know, a lot of people can relate to this concept, but I think it's why I'm so drawn to movies, cinematography. It's more about what's happening in the clothes and how the clothes are kind of like an added expressive feature. You know, the way a dress blows in the wind or your hair blows in the wind, it can convey hope or a sense of longing or a sense of mourning. And I put together some of the images in the reveal and I seriously started crying a little bit and I was like trying to figure out why I was so emotional. It's not that the reveal that I filmed was you know, even close to what I see when I watch amazing movies, but it kind of gave me a feeling like I was in my own movie. And there are just certain scenes that are so transportive. I'm just taken into the moment. I forget that it's me on camera. It's, it's telling me a story and I just, I loved the experience so much. It's exciting to kind of have those moments. It gives me hope that I can have more moments like that in the future and that I can learn from this and build on it and really just create experiences that make me feel like I'm living my best life and I'm following my dreams. So wow, that is a lot to unpack for this recap here, but I'm just trying to let you know what I was going through, where my mind was at, and how much I truly enjoyed making this video. So here we are at the end of another video, and if you enjoyed the video, if you could like and subscribe, it means the world to me. I would love to be able to focus on this more, and your support is crucial for that. I also just started a mailing list because I'm having trouble communicating with people directly and I love the comments and feedback please leave comments and feedback and I promise to answer you but then when questions arise and there needs to be more of a back and forth I, I guess I'm just a bit old school and I don't really understand the best way to do that through messaging on the YouTube platform below so if you have interest in joining my mailing list I'm going to link that below too I would love to start sending out newsletters here and there and have folks help me figure out what I should do for my next videos. So video ideas, communication with me. Oh, also the pants that I wore in the let's get down to business montage where my daughter and I were getting everything ready for the project. Those pants were something that I made previously and many people commented on wanting the vintage pattern. I now have everything set up to be able to trace the pattern and sell it to people just for a small fee to basically pay for shipping and handling a little bit of my time, the materials I needed to purchase to, you know, make the pattern and send it to folks. So if you wanted to get that pattern, please don't hesitate to reach out. And again, it would be a great idea to sign up for the newsletter because then I'll be able to have your contact information and we can have back and forth emails, which will be so much easier for me to manage than the back and forth comments through YouTube. But anyway, it has been an amazing ride. I'm so happy you're here with me. I love your support. I love that you tune in and it just really means so much to me. So until next time, see you soon. Bye.